wild. You know, one of the nicest things folks can do for their community, and I suppose for themselves, too, is to volunteer their time. And uh, Ben Nyhoff works with Hands On Battle Creek. He's right in the middle of all of that volunteerism, and we're talking about that this half hour. Ben, good morning. Good morning, Richard. Thank Thanks you for having me Thank here. you for the time today. So uh, you have tons of volunteers. You can't find enough of them to do. It's just a constant stream, right? <laughs> oh, it's always a problem. Too many volunteers. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> it's no. probably the other way, I'm thinking. You it is. Well, there's always a need. Those. There's infinite need for people yeah. to get involved. But we do have a great uh, community that is giving back, and uh, we're excited to highlight that tomorrow Right. our event. Yeah, we'll talk about that in, in just a second. What does Hands-On do? You're a fiduciary of sorts helping make these connections? Absolutely. Hands-On was formed in 1949. Oh, my. Out of a need to connect people with volunteers. And that was before the time of the Internet and, and uh, databases and that kind of thing. Yep. And people were looking for how can I get involved. And that was formed. And we've evolved many times over over the last several decades, but hmm. that's what we do is we connect people to the needs of the community. What's the greatest need right now? I think we see the greatest need as people who want to invest their time directly with other people, whether that is uh, reading to children, yep. uh, mentoring youth, helping adults who um, need to prep for the GED to better their uh, education, um, working directly with people. There's never enough people to do that, and there's always yep. a need. Okay. Always a need. You heard that. So that's interesting. Uh, you know, I presume that since 1949, volunteerism has changed somehow, or at least the need has. What have you observed with that? I think, you know, kind of touching on what I, I just mentioned yeah. is over time, we've seen it used to be people got involved, get their hands dirty, get out, um, you know, do a one-day project and plug in. And that need is still there to support our partner organizations and make sure that they can focus on their their work. But more and more we see a need of people who need good examples and people who need role models and who will focus on them and helping them uh, build up themselves so that they can succeed. Ben Nyhoff is here with Hands On Battle Creek and uh, one of the things that's nice when you have an opportunity to recognize folks who volunteer and do uh, provide uh, mentoring roles and things of that nature is to show how much we appreciate that. And so we'll talk about how hands-on does that when we come back in a minute on WBCK. Here with Ben Nyhoff this half hour, hands-on Battle Creek, the uh, hub when it comes to matching volunteers with volunteer opportunities here in Battle Creek. We mentioned before the break there that uh, one nice thing that you'd like to do is offer some recognition to folks who do this uh, and offer their time and expertise on a volunteer level, and you figured out a way to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I didn't because the people before me did, 30, they, they 39 did. years ago, oh my. I set up a community opportunity to recognize volunteers. We call it the Community Volunteer Awards. Sure. And that's taking place tomorrow. We're going to honor um, 35 nominees that our partners have lifted up and said these are our prime examples of um, committed volunteers who are giving back to the community, and we're excited to celebrate that with them. And you said nominees, so there must be a process by which these people uh, end up on your radar. Absolutely. We, we put a call out all springtime long for uh, these stories and these nominations, and then we um, take those with a group of volunteer judges from the community, and wow. we look for the, the best of the best. So we'll have a special chance to award some award winners tomorrow afternoon. Give us an example of some of the categories here that, you, uh, that you'll that you be awarding. Absolutely. Well, I won't list them all off, but there's categories for groups uh -huh. uh, because we know that group volunteering looks different than individuals. There's categories, all kinds of categories for individuals, including youth, um, Volunteer of the Year is a big one. And then kind of our Lifetime Achievement Award, wow. which is the uh, Continuing Service Award. And, uh, there's You get an impression of what that means, mm -hmm. Continuing Service, somebody who's spent a long time doing this, imagine mm -hmm. that. Who volunteers? Are these people who um, 
have had some connection to it in their upbringing or maybe uh, in their workplace? Uh, how do you, how do people discover that this is what they'd like to do? You know, there's infinite pathways that we see people get connected, whether it's through a, a one-time project they do at their workplace, whether it's through, like you said, people who families as they were growing up really instilled that in their lifestyle right um, I don't think there's just one way but uh, I think the people that we're honoring tomorrow have been doing this for a long time and and whatever they led them to be a part of volunteering it uh, really built it into their lifestyle mm-hmm what are what's an example uh, you talked about mentoring but I'm sure there are others uh, examples of what to folks are doing right now in volunteer roles. Absolutely. Well, one of the things we'll talk about and we've talked with you about before is uh, Reading Buddy volunteers. We've seen a great community response to that need this year. Um, we want to highlight some other mentoring programs with youth and with um, high schoolers. And an exciting one with that is the Bigs in Business program that's been growing where uh, students get to come out to a business place and actually be mentored on site there and see that. Mm-hmm. Um, many more things I could talk about, but we just don't have the time. What um, If somebody in that role wants to be shadowed or mentored in a business environment, how do you make that match? They probably tell you, I want to go to a radio station or something and, and yeah, you try well, to make that work. We work really closely with partners, uh, partners of ours at the United Way, who Uh, are specialists in how to make those connections and specifically in mentoring we work a lot with big brothers big sisters uh, programs like junior achievement is another one in the community and uh, we let them vet and do their special task in matching those people to the students that they're going to mentor do you run into people who say i don't know i'm i'm just an average person with uh Uh, you know, average experiences or an average uh, job, I don't know what I can bring to a mentoring situation. Do you hear them say that? I I think that's very common. You know, I started as a mentor this year myself, and I wondered those same questions too. So Mm. I can say that from a personal uh, perspective. But what I've seen and what we've seen is that all it takes is somebody who cares to get involved, who has that time they're willing to share, and that turns into a, a long term relationship hmm. yeah so when you hear them say that uh, what can i bring there must be something that folks say to them uh in within the context of their experiences that says hey you've done this mm-hmm. you can share that absolutely everyone has some kind of special skill and story that they can bring to the table and it just takes that first conversation to get the ball rolling Ben Nyhoff is here, hands-on Battle Creek. We'll take a short break and come back in just a second. Okay, Ben Nyhoff is here with hands-on Battle Creek. You mentioned United Way and those uh, connections. United Way has some primers that if folks are connected to them somehow, some goals, uh, overall overarching goals that folks might be trying to reach, and volunteering helps them do that, doesn't it? Absolutely. You know, a few years ago, Hands On and United Way merged together out of the effort to get volunteers involved. That was both of our missions, and to get people engaged. And when working as a program of United Way, we see the real impact that we can have if we plug in to the specific goal areas in health, income, education, and basic needs. All right. So in doing that, there's always some kind of an opportunity out there that makes those connections. When somebody volunteers, um, what kind of a commitment are they talking about? Because I think some folks think, oh, well, I don't have time for that. And then you realize you do. Yep. I always say that there is the full scope of commitment and skill level Uh, We can truly find something for anybody Uh, Mm. from a one-time, one-hour chance to work with somebody in our health area or in education to a day getting your hands dirty, as I mentioned earlier, uh, working on a day of caring with your uh, co-employees at your business. Uh, There's something for everybody and up until, you know, full time if you want. (laughs) (laughs) If you have that much time, we can help you fill it. 
uh, the uh, awards event tomorrow is one in which folks can come and check things out, right? Absolutely. Very open to the public. It takes place at the W.K. Kellogg Foundation tomorrow afternoon if you want to arrive between 4 and 4.30, and then we'll kick off the ceremony. We'd love to have more people come out and hear the great stories of what's taking place in Battle Creek. Yeah, there could be a person listening who's intrigued by this idea but just never taken the first step and maybe coming along and listening to the kinds of things that have been accomplished and from those people who've helped accomplish them Mm -hmm. would uh, be a good shot in the arm, I would think. Yeah, we hope that in addition to recognizing and celebrating those who are volunteering, that the other purpose of what we're doing is to inspire others to see how they can give back in the community. Mm -hmm. How do you keep the ball rolling at Hands-On Battle Creek? I mean, we, we hear about a lot of nonprofits now that struggle to keep the finances flowing. How does it work for you? Well, we um, are fortunate that we have a community of support, whether it's in uh, philanthropy and resources mm-hmm. that way or uh, through people giving of their time um, as volunteering. And while it is tricky for everyone to find how they can give back and get involved, we uh, have so many great partnerships that are allowing us to, to keep the ball rolling, as you said. Now, maybe there's uh, an organization out there that needs volunteer help. Um, This is the other side of this that maybe we haven't talked so much about. How do they make a connection with you? Well, you can always give us a call directly at 269-962-9538, and we'd be happy to have that conversation to see what fits you and uh, talk about the needs. Or if you want to spend time more on your own, go directly to Hands On bc.org where we keep a full list of those needs okay people can connect with so they can determine based on those needs that you tend to fulfill whether or not they might make that connection with hands-on absolutely yeah is it generally a a non-profit that you're working with yep almost almost always those Mm -hmm. are our partners in the community who are serving and giving back and they're the ones that need the help to accomplish their mission all right, let's say that website and that phone number again. Yep, 269-962-9538 or handsonbc.org. And you can also get connected at changethestory.org. All right. Well, congratulations to uh, all the volunteers locally who've been busy and certainly to the award recipients tomorrow. Absolutely. Ben, thank you. We'll stay in touch. Thank you for your time. Ben Nyhoff with Hands On Battle Creek. Eight.